next item is public comments. And again, we do have a significant no number of uh, people from the public that are here at this meeting. Uh, just for those of you who haven't attended the meeting before, uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being passionate about the library. Uh, we don't typically have this type of crowd, so <laughs> please, please forgive us if, if we're kind of working our way through this. Uh, we did ask people to sign up. They specifically wanted to make public comments, and, and the way that would work is uh, I'll call the name of the people as they're listed. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Um, and then we'll try to give each person three minutes to speak. Um, I appreciate y'all being respectful um, and, and I ask that you continue to do so when it's the person's time to speak. If we can hear from only that person, that will allow the, the board to not miss any information from that particular public comment. Uh, you don't have to use the full three minutes, but you're certainly able to. I will notify you when, when that three minutes is up and then you would allow the next person to speak. I'll, I'll call on their name. Does that hopefully make sense to everyone? Um, so if, if you can speak where you are, if you're able to speak loudly enough, or you can come forward, I think there may be a, a microphone similar to this at this chair. Again, that, I don't want anybody to have to yell too loud or restrain their voice. Um, so I will be the official timekeeper, I guess, in my role up here in the front of the room. Um, so the first name that I have on this list is for Kendra Klein. I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name is Kendra Klein. I live in Athens, Clark County. Uh, this wasn't the first thing I was going to talk about, but I just wanted to say the setup of the meeting room is really inaccessible. It's really hard for people in the back to hear you guys because you're not facing us when you're talking. You're really muffled. So if you could, like, you know, uh, make your voice a little louder when you're speaking so everybody behind you can hear you. Um, I'm just here to speak in support of the LGBT programming at the library. We've had some. Um, news that there have been complaints made, especially at Oconee, about their programming, about story times that they're having, and inclusive programming, and um, I think everybody here <laughs> is just here to speak in support of that programming and say that we support all the LGBT youth, staff, families, and community in Athens, and we want that programming to continue at the library, and we really appreciate the librarians and library staff who have provided that programming. Somebody might test in that one again. I, this is all new for us, so it doesn't appear to be all. Oh, sorry. Hi. Hi. It's loud. <laughs> so my name is Thea Camby. I'm a teacher and a veteran and a trans woman who lives in Athens. Um, and last <coughs> week, I stood outside the Rock Central Library as they debated whether books that represent queer youth should be available to the kids in that county. And I just want you all to imagine what it must feel like to be uh, a queer child who knows that that's happening in your community where books that represent you are debated by the adults <coughs> in your community. Um, trans youth can't find themselves in Star Wars or Harry Potter. Books that center queer experiences are often the only places that they can find shared experiences. And as a lot of you probably know, finding shared experiences in books, it saves lives and it makes living easier and better. Um, and we should also recognize it's not happening in a vacuum. This year, this state has proposed and passed unprecedented laws stripping trans youth of their rights. There's a lot of hate being thrown at these kids, making it even more important for them to find their representation in these texts. Um, also, anyone visibly trans in Georgia knows what it's like to be called slurs and to be harassed by strangers. So books that represent the queer community make a difference because they show that Athens stands with its trans citizens. There's a lot of voices saying, we don't belong here. We need voices that say we do belong here. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've gone three minutes, but book bands are wrong. I don't need three minutes to say that. Thank you. <laughs> name on the list is uh, Lisa Stevens. Uh, so 
my name is Lisa Stevens, and my husband and I live in Madison County with our two boys, um, six and nine. Um, I don't know who they're going to choose to love. I don't know how they're going to feel when they're comfortable in their skin. Um, but I know that I will always find them places where they feel welcome and included and safe. And I just want to thank the library for being one of those places for them as they grow and for all of the kids in the community. Um, I know that we read a ton. And there are so many books that have name calling and bullying and um, violence in them, like popular kid series have these things in them. And when we read and we, we see these things, we talk about it and we discuss it and we talk about how it may not be right for our family and how we don't align with that. Um, and we don't read the series, but I don't want to ban them so that other kids can't read them because they might love those series. So um, I just want to thank you all for being on the board and for making the library system inclusive. Thank you. Next name uh, signed up is Deb Chastain. Okay. Hi, I'm Deb McAtee Chastain. I have to hold this. And um, thank you all. It's a nice for party. And um, the deal with what is happening with people agitating against every type of diversity, and I'm not at all minimizing LGBTQ, plus it's every kind as well. They're, they're the ones on the front lines, but Georgia has passed legislation limiting Discussion of race in school, which means discussion of a lot of our history. And this is where not only can we come to find inclusion and diversity for everyone and have everything be accessible to people who, you know, are not now getting what they need, but um, it's, it's just a phenomenal People need truth, and they need truth of all kinds, and they need truth from our community. And I'm so very glad to be here. Thank you. Next name is Gail. Uh, my name is Gail Cowie. I live in Athens, and I have been passionate about our public library since I got my first job in one when I was 14 years of age. And that's part of why, again, I want to thank you all for your service. Um, I, the, I appreciate the chance to make a short statement that um, echoes uh, some of the previous speakers. Um, my starting point for that is that all of us, regardless of our zip code, the color of our skin, or who we love, want a good education for the children in our lives. Um, and by good education, I mean one that gives kids the skills they need to pursue their dreams and prepares them to thrive in their lives. And as you know, a public library with diverse offerings is a critical part of that kind of education. Unfortunately, a nationally funded organization and some uh, lo local folks are trying to ban books, and they're doing it spreading lies and misinformation about those books and the people represented in them. They seek to divide us and limit the education that children in our community receive based on their personal religious beliefs, political, political agenda, or both. But the library is not here for just one uh, religious viewpoint or for personal political agendas. It's here for all of us and for all the kids in our lives. Uh, so like the uh, prior speakers, I also encourage you that if you face, in the future, when you, if, if you face any request to remove specific, specific books or restrict programs, please do not appease extremists who want to limit educational uh, resources based on misinformation and false claims of liberty. Instead, continue to support the regional library system staff and the quality education resources and services they provide throughout the system. Thank you for your time. Next name on the list is uh, Sean James.
Hey everyone, my name is Sean Jameson. I'm a proud transgender man living here in Athens, Clark County. And I was moved to ride my bike here today in the heat. Uh, I grew up as a homeschooled kid, a very poor homeschooled kid. And it was the public library that uh, let me have the education I needed to be able to go on to uh, college and ultimately come to a graduate program here at uh, UGA in, uh, uh, here in Georgia. Um, it was also public libraries and people serving on library boards, librarians working on inclusive programming, like the programming that is offered through the athens Clark County Library that let me grow up into the adult that I came to be. And that is a very proud, uh, very, um, I think, pretty great adult. Uh, my friends think I'm a pretty great adult, too. So I want, I want to encourage you to resist the calls for censor censorship, because not only is that against the, the spirit of libraries, uh, it is against uh, the need to bring up the next generation of uh, proud, curious readers that we need uh, for uh, not only athens Clark County and the surrounding areas, not only for Georgia, but for everyone. Thank you. for Liberty are here today? None. <laughs> unless, they're, unless you're too shy to admit it. <laughs> Mon, you probably know this one. Uh, Mons for Liberty is not a grassroots movement. It's well funded by conservative Republicans and praised by Republican Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> DeSantis is an unapologetic opponent of academic freedom. The current increase in book banning efforts is not a massive grassroots movement. I read a recent survey that said this, in 37 states across the country, 1,000 of the books challenged. The challenges were brought by a total of 11 people. That's not, that's not massive. I yield the remainder of my time, as good old Jamie Raskin would say. <laughs> the next name is Janet Brick. Hi everyone, my name is Janet Frick. Um, I'm here with a large contingent of my friends uh, from Coney Street United Methodist Church, uh, one of many faith communities in this city that is openly welcoming and affirming of people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. I am also, I don't, I can't uh, improve on the comments you've heard already, so I'll put on a different hat that you haven't heard. I am a developmental psychology professor at UGA in the psychology department. I've lived in Athens for 26 years, raised both of my kids here. They both graduated from Clark County Public Schools. Um, it is incredibly important for all of us as a community, you can see the turnout here today. These, you know, I think everyone here had less than 24 hours notice to show up. Um, I would just really offer my thanks and my encouragement for all of you to be proactive about this well-funded, well-organized movement that is that is attacking our freedoms all across this country and specifically attacking uh, the freedom of libraries to provide supportive inclusive materials. As a developmental psychologist, I can tell you that for kids who are growing up queer, questioning with identities that are marginalized in any number of ways, the most important thing for them to be able to avoid the pitfalls of isolation and 
um, and, and just a, a feeling of loss and, and loneliness is to find acceptance and community and representation. And the library is an incredibly important part of that. So I thank you for your service and I just ask uh, you very humbly for all of you to remain vigilant and proactive in remaining a safe and inclusive space. Thank you. Signed up is Lyra Rhodes. Good afternoon. My name is Lyra Rhodes. I'm a retired educator in the Grady College of Journalism. I've been a writer all my life, and there are two things I want to share with you. What is when I was in the fifth grade? I wanted to read Green Mansions. The book was on the 11th grade shelf, and the librarian would not check it out to me because she didn't think that it was at my reading level. I had been tested to read at college level in the fifth grade. So my father, who was a Baptist minister and had no money, bought a copy of Green Mansions and gave it to me and said, no one should ever tell you what you can read and when you can read it. <laughs> Reading is very important, and I carried that through to my graduate studies at Temple University in Philadelphia. I was asked to join a research group to look at why fourth grade boys stopped reading. So I did, and went to all the schools and videotaped them. Well, it was obvious from my research that they loved sports more than they did reading. But my research turned into reading Rainbow. And I'm very proud of how a book and research and reading and being a part of a group and safe in that environment is so important to our young people of coming at them from where they are, not where we want them to be, and encouraging them to read. So I thank you for being here and for having that space for all young people to come and read books. Thank you. It's my bad writing, not your bad reading. Uh, I'm Robert Foster, Athens Clark County, member of Oconee Street United Methodist Church, uh, professor of religion and New Testament at University of Georgia, and what hasn't been mentioned so far, a card carrying member of the Athens Clark County Library. <laughs> Um, uh, my adopted daughter is from Vietnam, and every summer with her summer reading, we came to the library, and we would sit in the cubicles upstairs, and she would do her reading, and I would do my reading, because I'm a nerd, so I was enjoying the time, her less so. <laughs> um, several years ago, with all the things going on in race in our nation, um, we were on a long road trip together, and I was playing the audiobook of How to Be Anti-Racist by Irma Kendi. And so we listened to that for several hours together. I'm sure she enjoyed that as well. <laughs> but then we stopped it so that we could have a conversation about how she was experiencing race and racism and where that was happening in her school and those sorts of things. And books provide opportunities for very important conversations in families. And it gave me an opportunity because we listened to this book together to really address her own feelings and experiences of race and racism. And I, as a white adopted parent, found that to be highly important. The public library provides books and opportunities and learning experiences that allow us to have important conversations as families. And I hope that you will take it to heart 
to continue to stand up for the rights of our whole community to have those kind of conversations in their families, to love their children, and to allow us, who are allies with them, to love them together. Thank you. Thank you, Robert Falsch. Robin Johnson. I'm from Clark County. Um, I'll open by saying, without a whole long story, books saved me. As they say, many people growing up. Um, I'm a member of a faith that has um, saints and holy people. And the saints and holy people for today um, are Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Amelia Bloomer, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Ross Tubman. And I'm going to try to channel them a little bit. <laughs> uh, I do thank you for your service. Uh, I know from volunteering at Daily Bread weekly since 1985 what the library means not to all of us, but to many other people on a daily basis. It means safety. It means access to a computer. It means so much. All people, especially children, are entitled to stories that represent them. All of my brothers and sisters, they're entitled to accurate history, and regard, they're entitled to that regardless of their race, their gender, their age, their sexual orientation, or any other descriptor that only describes one aspect of their full humanity. Uh, parents can and should monitor the reading of their children so those conversations can happen. We don't prepare our children for the future by keeping truth, reality, and complexity from them. We deal with that on an age-appropriate basis, but we have to tell them the truth so they can live in the real world. But other parents cannot tell the parents of a different child what that child may or may not read, watch, listen to, etc. And they certainly may not monitor or control the reading of my grandson who lives here in Clark County. Thank you. First off, I was told there would be cake. <laughs> okay, um, I'm an old man now, but I was once a child. And when I was a 13-year-old child, I had to have some significant surgery. And the significant surgery left me for about 12 weeks uh, in a cast uh, up to my hip, and I couldn't get around. I was stuck at home with my family, um, and it was pretty horrible. And my dad was an eighth grade dropout, um, and my mother, she did finish high school, um, but that was where her education finished. But my parents both encouraged reading, and when I went through that period, when I was 13, my dad went to the library, which is the first time I had known him to go to the library, usually, my sister and I got dropped off and picked up. My dad went to the library and told the librarian my situation. And she sent home a stack of books for me. The top one was titled, The Boy Who Could Make Himself Disappear. And I know that some of you remember that book. And I think my father thought it was a science fiction book. I certainly thought it was a science fiction book when I saw the title. But it was really about a kid dealing with isolation and loneliness and crazy adults, and how he coped with it, and how he maintained his own dignity through it, and how he saw the dignity in other people. 
I have so much respect for whatever librarian told my dad that book was a good idea. And as an adult now, as an old man now, I encourage you all to have faith in the professionals who have trained and worked and experienced working with children, families, adults, across the spectrum in our community. Have, have faith in their decisions because I can tell you from experience, they've got some really powerful, correct insights. Thank you. So that does conclude the uh, public comment portion of our meeting today. Hopefully everyone uh, appreciates uh, the, the time that has been given to the individual people that have taken the time to, to come out today uh, to speak, and even those who didn't speak that, that came out and and support uh, again i want to thank you personally for your passion for the library and for uh, for taking time out of your day to be here uh, we will move forward with our agenda for today's meeting you're welcome to stay uh, you don't have to stay <clears throat> but we're going to move forward to the next item on the agenda which would have to do with the uh, financial report for fiscal year 2023 <laughs>